boys and girls. Welcome to our next section of the Big God Story. Now let's review because we've covered a whole lot. Moses and the Israelites had just finished creating the tabernacle, right? And we talked about how the tabernacle was a way to show that God dwelled among his people. Now, he also used a cloud, and the cloud was to show people when they should start traveling and where they should stay put. And they did this for 40 years in the desert. Now, it came upon a time where Moses was starting to get pretty old, and it became known to him that he would not be taking the people into the promised land. Instead, there would be a new leader. His name was Joshua. Now, Joshua loved God very much, and he followed uh, Moses and he followed God, so he knew a lot about leading the people, and he had watched Moses, and kind of Mo Moses was his mentor, if you will. And so Joshua was given a special message from God. God told Joseph, oop, God told Joshua, there we go, God told Joshua to be strong and courageous. Now, I think that's a pretty cool message to be told because Joshua's going to have to be strong and courageous to go into this new unknown land. Now, as the Israelites were coming upon their new land, there was one big obstacle that was in their way. It was a gigantic river called the Jordan River. Now, at this time, it's believed that the Jordan River was flooded, and so not only was it a big body of water, but now it was flooded. So it was way over 10 feet deep and over a mile a mile wide is what we were what we're thinking that it might have been and so that was pretty deep and pretty far they couldn't build a boat uh, most of them couldn't swim and they had all their livestock with them and probably their tents and and all their belongings that was going to be impossible what in the world were they going to do hmm this is sounding a lot like one of the obstacles that the Israelites have had in the past. Are any of you thinking the Red Sea? <laughs> I know I am. Well, you know, it's interesting that God started his journey by a miracle with the Red Sea where he parted the waters and they were able to, draw, uh, to travel on dry land. Well, isn't that amazing that God performed another miracle, very similar to the first, where he parted the waters of the Jordan River and all the Israelites were able to travel on dry land as they traveled across into the Promised Land. Now, Joshua was a good leader and he wanted to make sure that the people kept a, a remembrance of this special miracle. Because you know, as they were going to go into this new promised land, they were gonna be facing some challenges. It wasn't just going to be um, super easy. Now God wanted to continue providing tests and showing his goodness to the people. And so uh, Joshua decided we needed to build a monument something to remember this special miracle so that when they got worried or concerned, they could always think back and see that monument and know that God was with them. So Joshua told each member, each of the leaders of the members of the tribe, so there were 12 tribes, to go and pick out a big stone to be used as a monument. And so they gathered up those 12 big stones and created a giant a monument, a pile of stones to remember that God created this amazing miracle. Now, it wasn't just that God created a miracle. It was that God provided for them. God was there taking care of them. God cared about their needs. 
And that was a message that they were going to need as they went into the promised land. You know, I think about that today for me. I know that I've shared with you before that I sometimes struggle with worrying about things. And I have a couple of big worries going on in my life right now. And I'll have to be honest, I haven't been very good at giving it to God and letting him be in control of it. But you know what God does? He brings to mind other times in the past when he was able to provide and take care of my concerns and worries. He'll bring them back to mind and he'll say, hey, remember this? Remember this? Remember this? Remember how I took care of you? Remember how I provided for you? Remember how I was here to take care of you? And I think, you know what, Lord? You're so right. Why should I worry? Why should I fear when you have shown that you provide and take care of me? How about you? Do you have a moment in your life that you could think back to how God provided for you? How God took care of your needs? Maybe you're too young and you struggle sometimes to remember. I want you to have your parents tell you some of those times where God provided. In fact, sometimes you might not remember, but your parents do, and they can tell you stories that they can bring back. And remember when? Remember when? How God provided for us. You see, if we think back and remember how God has provided for us, it brings us great comfort that God is going to do the same again because we're his children and he loves us. He's not going to let us fail. And so I think that is super important to remember those things that have happened in the past to help us to remember to trust him in the future. And you know what? God hasn't just left us with our memories. He's also given us his word and his word is chock full of ideas and, and um, verses that help us to remember that God is in control and he loves us. One of my favorites is 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your cares on him for he cares for you. That's my favorite. I just can cast my cares to him, throw them to him and say, you've got this, God. It's too big for me to take care of. Just like the Jordan River was way too big of an obstacle for the Israelites to try to keep, tackle, God is in control of all the big and the little concerns that we have. You know, I think that's something we should thank him for. Let's pray. Oh God, you know, I just come before you and I just want to thank you so much for giving us this message about the Israelites and how they could cast their cares on you. How you showed them as they were ready to go into a new land that you are their father, you're their provider, and you were not going to leave them alone, that you were there to take care of them. Lord, you are giving us those reminders as well. When we look back on ways that you've provided for us and taken care of us, and you've also given us your word, where you promise to take care of us, to give, up, to give our cares to you because you care for us. Thank you so much for those reminders, Lord. We pray that you would help us to remember that this week and choose to give you our cares and our worries and to trust that you are in control. Thank you, Lord, for this message. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, well, don't forget your remember verse. Just like I said, remembering verses is another way that God can tell us or speak to us that he is loving us and caring for us. He brings those verses out in our minds at just the right time. I've seen it happen time and time again. So I'm very thankful. I remember a lot of different verses and I've learned them at a young age because whatever you remember as a kid, you usually remember as a grown up. So I want to encourage you to keep working on those verses. It's so important. And I'll talk to you guys next time, okay? Take care. Bye.